Welcome this, to this tutorial where I'm going to be going over how to run NAMD on a Macintosh computer. The, it should be relatively similar to how Windows works, but just Mac specific. So, um, Full disclosure, I'm running Mac OS Big Sur, so Mac OS 11.7.3 on a MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That is relevant in that um, NAMD does require fairly large amount of computing power, so if you're significantly below 16 gigabytes of RAM, you might uh, your computer might take a lot longer to do some of this stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is just Google NAMD. This will take me to the Theoretical and Computational Biophysics group link. Once I'm here, I'm going to go Software NAMD Download. In my case, since again I am on Mac, I'm going to go down here to Mac OS, actually, uh, I want the most recent. So um, 2.14 here, uh, Mac OS X 86 underscore 64. I've already downloaded it, but we're going to pretend that I'm hitting that link to download it now. Then I'm also going to come up here to instruction, tutorials, hit that. I'm going to scroll down and under NAMD tutorial, you want both the um, PDF for Unix Mac and the zip file that's a uh, compressed file of all the files you need to run this tutorial. I'm not actually going to download the PDF because I'm just going to run through it, but I have downloaded that zip file. And if you're following this tutorial, you should too. Let's get into it. Um, I'm going to go here to my downloads folder. So actually, uh, downloads, here we go. Okay, so here in the downloads you see these are the two files I downloaded, a multicore.tar file, that's a archive as a zip. So I need to decompress both of these. Um, Archive Utility should be built in on your Mac that will open these out and turn them into folders where you can access all of the stuff contained inside. Now what I'm going to do is rather than just run off here, I'm going to take all of the files in here and put them into this um, little NAMD tutorial folder I've created. And I'm going to do the same thing for the contents of the tutorial files folder. Whoopsies, didn't mean to put them on my desktop. Um, just going to select them all and drag them over here to NAMD Tutorials. So now this folder um, now um, contains all of the contents of both that NAMD application folder as well as the tutorial folder. I know it looks like a lot, but we are going to be referencing multiple things in here. So just to give a quick tour of kind of what we're dealing with here. Um, this is the Unix executable file labeled NAMD2 is the actual application that we're going to be running. However, because it doesn't have a UI, we're going to have to run it through the application terminal. This is the Mac version of what Windows users may know as a command prompt or command line. Um, all of these folders are, whoops, no, I, no, frick, I just want to show them. Um, these are all from the tutorial folder and this is where we're going to find the actual files that we're dealing with. So if I go into common, um, there's a PDB and PSF file. Those are the ones, those are the files that the simulation is actually going to use as the data to build the simulation on. We're not going to change anything. Um, this is a parameter file, also an important piece of the puzzle. And finally, you have a sample configuration file. Don't tell me that. Um, things like this you're going to want to open with text edit. So the sample configuration file, I want to make very clear, this will not work. If you try to run NAMD with your sample configuration file without any changes to this document, it's just going to error out and nothing's going to happen. Um, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like. Your structure file is going to be PSF. Your um, PDB file is obviously going to give Atom location data. And output name is going to be the name of the file that this is going to create at the end. Um, and there's just a whole bunch of parameters. We're not really going to worry about that right now because all we're really going for is just to show you how this is supposed to look when it actually works. 
So the other file I'm going to be accessing here is um, under one two sphere folder. There's this file ubq dot underscore ws underscore um, eq configuration. Again with this, J just just text edit. Text edit is what will open this. There we go. Okay. Um. So this here is dot dot slash common ubq ws pdb. All of this jazz is. Um, telling it how to access those files that we just looked at. The reason why it has dot dot slash common slash ubq ws psf is that the first dash tells your computer you're working with um, with your current folder and to look inside that current folder. Another dot tells it to go up one folder level. Excuse me. So in this case, when we run the simulation, that um, we're going to be accessing this file so the computer is going to first start to look for other files in the same folder as this in this one two sphere folder we don't want it looking there we want it looking at that in that common folder where our psf and pdb files are so dot dot is going to take it up to the namd tutorial level and then slash common is going to bring it in here and then finally the file name is going to tell it specifically what it's grabbing, which is these files. Um, same thing down here, it's also referencing that parameter file. So that's how that's going to work. Um, so yeah, let's get into what you actually need to type into terminal to get this to run. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is type cd, that's current directory, and we're going to set the current directory to this folder. On Mac it's really easy, yeah, you can just drag it in and it'll show up there and then you hit return and now the current directory is set to um, is set to this you can prove that by that's not right hang on um, I did something wrong uh, okay <laughs> don't do that all right if I just type ls without a little apostrophe after it it shows all of the things inside this folder, so that's how I know I am, in fact, um, my current the what my computer recognizes as the current directory is, in fact, this folder and its contents. So now on Mac, what you're going to have to type is dot slash namd2. This is because if you just type namd2, it's not going to recognize that as you trying to open the, that um, executable file. It's going to think that you're typing a command and it's not going to recognize it. So you're just going to say dot, so current directory slash navigating to namd2. It'll immediately spot this file and go ahead and run it. However, you also want to give some arguments here. So the arguments we're going to get are um, dot slash two dash, oh no, one dash two dash sphere slash ub ubq let me check the exact name ubq underscore ws underscore eq dot conf um and then finally what we're going to type here because so this specifies a configuration file namd2 won't run without a configuration file if you try to just type namd2 i'll show you what happens um, well, actually I won't, but just take my word for it. If you just type namd2 with nothing else behind it, it's not going to run. It's just going to say, uh, I don't have a configuration file. Bye. So we're specifying we want it to run that. And um, actually one thing I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to jump in here and at the very bottom of this file, it says run 2,500 rounds of this. I'm only going to run 100 because that's all I need to prove that this works. <laughs> If you actually want like a better simulation, obviously you want a higher number, but just because of how long it'll take to compute, we don't want that. Finally, over here in terminal, I'm going to say greater than sign. Um, I'm going to tell it to dump all of this information in a log file instead of running it all in the terminal window. So I'm going to say um, ubq demo 
dot log that tells it to create a log file and then I'll just put an ampersand I don't actually know what that ampersand does but it's important for this to work so now to have all of that typed out I'm gonna hit enter and it doesn't look like anything is happening but that's because since I told it to create a log file it's putting all of the run information in this log we can actually open this at, up with console and in real time see what the computer is doing so this is what um, NAMD looks like behind the scenes as it's running. It's right now it's going through the minimizer steps. There's like a hundred of those, so it's gonna take a hot minute to do that. But yeah, that is what it should look like if NAMD is running successfully. So um, if you hit any errors, there's either something wrong in one of those files you referenced or in the command you typed out. Um, and I might make another video at some point to kind of go over some of those common errors and how to troubleshoot them. But for now, um, at least you know what it, how it's kind of supposed to look like and how to use those tutorial files to get an initial simulation running on your computer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just let this run, but probably uh, speed this up and, or clip it out and just show you the final products. So meanwhile, um, let's see, has it started creating any files yet? Yeah, okay. So over here, back in the one two sphere directory, since that's the directory where the configuration file is, that's a directory that all of the files are going to get dumped into. Um, and so you can see all of these coordinate, velocity, and X, and C files are being created. Huh, excuse me. The important file that's going to be created and not finished till the very end of this simulation run is actually going to be a .dcd. So that's the one that we're really going to be watching for. This is in the example output, this shows you kind of what the final output is going to look like. Once the simulation is totally done running, um, your files are going to look something like this. There's going to be a few restarts that happen in the course of running it. Um, we're really just interested... Oh, yeah, okay, so it's already... Um, it's already done. So... Um, Hmm. It did not create the DCD file. That's probably because I had so few steps. You probably need at least 500 steps to do that. So um, let me just go in here and change that. I'll tell it to run at least 500 steps. And do this again. I'm fairly confident that this is actually going to work this time, so I'm just going to end this video here since it's already um, 14 minutes long, but thanks for watching.